Hey everybody, welcome back to another Java tutorial. In this video, you're gonna learn all about the Java throws keyword and throw, what the difference is. Also check out my keyboard, I'm super happy about it. But first, if you're new here, my name's Alex. On this channel, I post a Java tutorial just like this one all the time. Also, if you're looking to get a job in tech, my friends over at Springboard have a really great online coding bootcamp. All that information, as well as $1,000 off, are in the link in the description. So let's start learning about the throw and throws keywords in Java by going to File, New Java Project. We'll call this like throw ball, because that's a pun, kind of. Right click on source, go to new class. We'll call this learn to throw. Hit public static void main checkbox and then hit finish. Basically, throws goes at the top and throw goes in the middle. And both have to do with exceptions. So let's go into an example of throws at the top and then throw in the middle. Let's just pick anything that can throw an exception. An exception is just that red error you see. So I know a file reader has exceptions that it throws. We'll call it F. We'll import it. We'll say we pass in some bad file name like file.txt with no path. A file reader is supposed to get the path to an existing file, but if it does not find that file, then it'll throw a file not found exception. So that's why we get this red underline. If we hover over it, you see unhandled exception type file not found exception. There are a couple quick fixes that we can do here, but let's click add throws declaration. This creates this throws keyword with the file not found exception at the top of the method. And that's where you see throws with an S. It's basically saying that this main method throws a file not found exception to prepare you that, hey, this method might throw this specific exception. So if we save and run this, we see all this red text. And when you see red text like this with a bunch of lines in the first line and the first uh, word is exception, this whole thing is the exception. It looks scary, but it's really just a helpful message to tell you where exactly it went wrong. And that's what the throw and throws keywords are all about. We see exception in thread main, java.io.file not found exception. This is the name of the exception. We see file.txt, and then a helpful message, the system cannot find the file specified. It gives you a little path to like what went wrong. So at the very end here, you see learn to throw.main. This is our learn to throw class in the main method. And it even says the exact line number where it went wrong, seven. And the reason we could execute it is we is because we added this throws at the top of the method. If this was not here, we couldn't run it because there's errors, because there needs to be either a throws keyword at the top, or we could surround it in a try catch where we do try this and then catch that's file not found exception. We'll call it F. So we have to do it like that if we didn't put throws at the top. It's because we want to know where the exceptions are happening and we want to keep track of them. Here's another example. If we had an array, just of size five or something, and then we set a value like a of index six equals some number like nine. We can remove these import statements at the top. If we save and run this, we'll get another exception. It starts with exception. There's red stuff going on. It says exception in thread main, java.lang.array index out of bounds exception. It's just another example of an exception. Index six out of bounds for length five. We get that helpful message and then the line number where it went wrong. We can run this because arrays work a little differently with the exceptions rather than objects. If an object throws an exception, you definitely need to have throws at the top or in a try catch. Here's one last example of throws and then we'll get into throw. Say we have another method that maybe uses writing to a file. We'll call it write. And it uses a buffered writer. Buffered writer w equals new buffered writer. Again, this is just an object that helps us write to a file. This could be any object that has an exception thrown. In this constructor, we have to pass in a file writer object, so we'll do that with some file name dot text. We'll import those. This should be called file writer. And we get the red underline 
which indicates that we have to put a throws keyword at the top of the method or surround with a try catch. Since we're learning about the throws keyword, we'll click the first one. That just generates this at the top. It would be the exact same as if we typed it ourselves. Throws exception. You could type exception, and this will catch any type of exception, like any exception that happens. But the specific one is IO exception. So then if we wanted to use it and writes to it, for example, test, and then close it, how you would just use a buffer writer. If we do write, we get write underline because this method, right, throws that exception. So if this method th throws the exception, then the main method, which it's being called in, also needs to know about it. So you could do that with throws IO exception at the top again. If we run, nothing happens, but it works. Or we could put it in that try catch again. Surround with try catch. Now let's move on to the throw keyword. Start with a clean slate. Throw goes in the middle, and you could type it like this. Throw new. For example, we were just doing IO exception, so we could type IO exception. Then if you hover over it and click import IO exception, we have to put the parentheses here, and then we have to add the throws declaration. So throw puts that exception out there. So if we run it, we see that this is thrown. If this was commented out, save and run, nothing happens. We are throwing the exception manually ourselves. And this is helpful because if something we expect to go wrong actually does go wrong, then we can throw that helpful information on you know the line number and the class where it's going wrong and the message through the exception rather than like printing it out ourselves. For example, let's do that array index out of bounds exception. Let's throw that one ourselves. Let's start off with a clean slate again and let's actually do this in another method. We'll say public static void. We'll call this array practice. And we'll pass in some index called i. Oh, sorry. Some integer called i. Say we just have some array that's size 5. We'll call it a. It's of size 5. We'll say if the index, if i, is greater than 5, then we'll throw an array index out of bounds exception ourself. We can say throw new array index out of bounds exception. Such a long exception. We'll put our parentheses. I think we can actually type in a message here ourselves like, hey, don't put indexes too high. Like that. So then if we did array practice and passed in a like seven, save and run, we get our exception thrown. And look, look at that. We get the message too. Our custom message. And it's thrown exactly where we want it to be thrown. We could also throw a regular exception like this. Just type exception. A generic exception is what it's called. And if we hover over it, we can add throws declaration, which means a heads up to the program that this method is going to throw this, which again, we need to put at this one as well, save and run. And we get that regular exception now instead of an array index out of bounds exception. For the array index out of bounds exception, we didn't need to put the throws at the top. I think that's specific to that exception, but for most other ones you do. So again, throws at the top of the method, throw, in the middle, this method throws an exception versus we are throwing an exception here in this method right here on this line, and that's the difference. You can also use throws for multiple exceptions. Just put a comma after each exception, and the generic exception will cover all of them. So I hope this helps. Thanks for watching, and I hope you have a great rest of your day.